published three videos so far on how to find stock ideas that you can research for your portfolio. We've done Peter Lynch style, buy what you know, buy what you see in the real world. We've talked about filtering through thousands of stocks using stock screeners. We've talked about using other people's ideas and making them your own. Each of them are starting points that require a lot of research for your own investing. There are a number of ways to find stocks, some of them more advanced and some that I will cover in later videos. I wanna use this video to talk about two more ideas for how to find stock ideas that are suitable for beginners as ways to think about approaching your stock portfolio. Let's start with the first one, throwing darts. Throwing darts, why not? Let's remember what we're doing here. We're not looking literally to buy a stock. I'm not saying throw a dart and then buy the stock that the dart lands on. Beyond anything else, who throws darts anymore, especially at either your computer screen or a newspaper? Nobody's reading the newspaper. But whatever random method, it's not meant to get you to the point of buying. It's meant to get you to the point of researching. As a new investor, it's good for you to get experience and practice. And so any idea is worth considering. But also, the random method is useful because it gets away from any preconceptions. Peter Lynch style is based on how you look at the world. Screeners are based on the criteria you think are relevant. Other people's ideas are based on the ideas you can find and the people that you think are relevant. Random says, forget all that, wipe the slate clean, let's just be open to what we stumble upon because then we're observing the company freshly. Somebody on Twitter responded to a tweet I just had and he said he goes by companies beginning with the letter A. There's no logic there. It's just a way for you to wipe the slate clean and start fresh. So the random approach can be useful in that way. Here's an example of a sort of random stock picking approach that I used. In my first month of investing, I bought shares of Fidelity National Insurance. I was looking for a financial company. Did I really understand what Fidelity National Insurance did? Viewer? No, not really. Did I understand that it had nothing to do with Fidelity Investments, the brokerage company? Yes, I'm pretty sure I knew that they were totally separate entities. But I was looking for a financial company. I came across Fidelity on a five-star stocks list, and I bought shares of it. Later, I swapped it out for this small bank based in New York because it had a bigger dividend. It was probably right next to Fidelity in the list of stocks because it was flushing financial. So they're very close, both in terms of ticker symbols and in terms of alphabetical order. If I had held on to Fidelity from when I bought it till now, I actually would have outperformed the S&P 500. And Fidelity National Insurance is a very interesting company. I don't actually like their business very much because it's sort of a tax on mortgages, but it's something that's relevant. It's a play on house building on new homes. And they've spun off a couple of companies. I own one of those, FG. Fidelity is a good company to study. It's a good business to follow. It's got a lot of interesting stuff. Flushing, by the way, has not outperformed the market even before the recent bank sell-off of March 2023. So this was still a productive experience to study these stocks, to stumble on them, to understand them, and to learn more. That's my experience with random stock picking. It's happened a couple other times, but that was the first example that I could think of. Top-down stock picking is probably the polar opposite to random. What top-down stock picking means is that you're taking a thematic idea, a concept about the world. AI is gonna be huge. Crypto is gonna be huge. I think air conditioners are gonna be super necessary in a global warming world whatever it is, and then you say, okay, how do I invest in that? What is the winner in AI? What is the winner in crypto? Whatever. And that's how you go. You say, I have an idea, and now I need to express it through a stock idea, a stock pick. Let's go to that example of air conditioning. That came from a friend. I manage her portfolio here in Europe, and I had been teaching her about Peter Lynch style investing, and she was looking around the world and trying to observe what could be interesting. And she hit on this idea. It's getting hotter and hotter in Europe. Air conditioning isn't as popular here as in the States. So why don't we consider buying an air conditioning company? We did. We found the biggest air conditioning company in the world is 
Daikin, a Japanese-based company, but they have some shares in Germany. So we bought a handful of shares. The company is a little more expensive than I'd like, but it's worth considering. And so we put it in our portfolio for now and we'll keep watching it and potentially add over time. That's an, taking a top-down idea. Air conditioning is gonna be popular to a company that we can buy that will express that idea. Here's another example of top-down stock picking that crosses with a little bit of Peter Lynch and past experience. My wife's from West Michigan, which I learned over the, our years together, is a hub for furniture making in the US. Grand Rapids used to be considered the furniture capital of the US. A lot of publicly traded furniture companies are in West Michigan or in the Midwest around there. I own shares of Kimball International for almost a decade before it was bought out in March of 2023. It wasn't a huge win, by the way, though it, it had other stuff going on. I really enjoyed following Kimball, and it was a good performing stock until the pandemic, and then it didn't recover all the way. That's another thing that I've been looking for. So many stocks are either well past where they were before the pandemic or haven't really absorbed all of the pain that they're going to suffer from the post-pandemic hangover. So it's tough to find interesting stocks. One area I thought was interesting was office furniture. Kimball had been bought out, so it wasn't going to experience that full return. But I thought office furniture was interesting. I had a top-down thesis as well. I thought more people are likely to be working in offices more often, five to 10 years from now, than they are right now. We're still kind of going hybrid mode. We're still, companies are still pushing to get people back into the office. They're not having great success, but I suspect, unfortunately, because I'm a remote work advocate, that they will win. With that top-down thesis and with my experience in the industry, I researched, I ended up on Steelcase. I like Steelcase for specific reasons related to it. It's not going through a merger, whatever, but there is the top-down thesis that office furniture will probably do better. You can hear the challenges with top-down stock picking in my description of Steelcase especially, because I have to get two things right. I have to be right that office furniture will be in more demand over time. And then I have to be right that steel case is the best way to express that idea. It's sort of a one-two combo instead of a straight uppercut, a bank shot instead of a swish. It can be harder to pull off as a result. It's always really useful to look at past growth stories as well. If you look at the history of railroads, of automobiles, of airlines, you'll find that the initial investors didn't always do so well, that a lot of the initial companies faded and burned out and went bankrupt and returned nothing to their investors. The same will apply if you look at computers. Think of all the computer companies from the 90s that have faded out or gone away. It will apply to artificial intelligence. And more recently, think of all these different booms that have actually been relevant, 3D printing, cannabis, what have you, where the investors didn't really do well despite the technology playing out. That's an important consideration to keep in mind with top-down stock picking. Even if you get the theme right, you may not profit from it if you don't get the details right. To the experienced investor, the value of an idea is worth its weight in gold. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. It's hard to find and it can make a huge difference. A very relevant example is Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's longtime partner, had been reading Barron's for 50 years, and he said that he's only gotten one good idea over those 50 years. He also made $80 million on that idea and then rolled that into another investment with somebody else that got it to $400 or $500 million. That's not going to be the case for you. You're a beginning investor. If you're throwing that sort of money around, you don't need to listen to me. But... You also don't need to put so much weight on the ideas at this point. It's more important to find different ways of finding ideas, find which approaches work for you, and then learn how to evaluate the stocks so that you can decide what to actually buy and what to put in your portfolio. That's what I'm going to talk about in my next set of videos, how to evaluate a stock, how to break it down and consider whether you should actually buy it or not. Subscribe to this channel to get those videos. Check out shortinvestingguide.com for more info. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for those videos coming ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm.